In the past year, you may have heard some news about the overflow from Poughkeepsie sewers going into the Hudson River. Well, to paraphrase the Beatles, though the news sounds rather bad, I'm here to give you a truer picture of what's actually happening. Now, I know a video about sewers doesn't sound very exciting, but there are some surprising facts that will give you a picture of where we are and where we're going with our clean water system. Some amazing enhancements have already happened and several incredible improvements are coming. Let's start at the beginning. A century ago, the idea of collecting domestic sewage, sometimes called sanitary sewer, and piping it away was a breakthrough. Prior to that, sewage was often dumped into the streets, causing outbreaks of diseases like cholera and typhoid. In older cities around the country and the world, the style of sewer systems that were built historically were known as combined sewer systems. Poughkeepsie was no exception. Combined sewers are sewer systems typically in older portions of the city that collect storm or rainwater runoff, domestic or sanitary sewage, and industrial wastewater in the same pipe and bring it to the water pollution control facility. Today we know that it's better to separate the sanitary sewage from the storm water because then the storm water doesn't overwhelm the collection system and we can treat the sanitary sewage directly. And in some areas of the city of Poughkeepsie, we already have separate pipes. In all the white areas of this map of the city of Poughkeepsie, we have separate systems. Other older areas, such as the residential neighborhoods south of the eastbound arterial and along Hooker Avenue, are served by combined sewers. Although these locations are called combined sewage overflows, most of them rarely actually overflow. These locations are entirely in compliance and permitted under the coverage of the State Pollution Discharge Elimination System, or SPEEDY's permit. Typically, the times that that happens is when there is a great deal of snow melt, or the ground in the city is completely saturated, when the system exceeds capacity. If there is so much volume hitting the CSO locations, it can only be relieved with a discharge through a pipe that takes some sewage which is heavily diluted by stormwater and discharges it into the river. In fact, there are 800 permitted CSO locations in the whole of New York State, and we only have six of them. And almost every waterfront city from Poughkeepsie, New York to London, England, are working to modernize their systems to prevent any sewage overflow ending up in any body of water. So we're not alone and we're in compliance with all of the regulations. So why media outlets covering this issue? Here's why. I read the news today, oh boy. In the past year, a new act came into force called the Sewage Pollution Right to Know Act. All sewer overflow locations are posted on the Department of Environmental Conservation's website and are required to post signs when there's an outfall. The media sees the postings and covers the story. What you need to know is that when there is an overflow, it is never only sewage. The sanitary sewage is always heavily diluted before it ever reaches the water. What triggers the permitted overflow event is a rain or a snow event, and so the runoff further dilutes the sewage. When this happens, we're not out of regulation or compliance. Looked at from a different perspective, there's actually an upside to having the CSO outfalls publicized. Here's Dan Shapley from Riverkeeper to explain why. Before the sewage right to know law, uh, we had a problem that didn't have a solution in that we knew that there was a lot of money that needed to be invested by cities like Poughkeepsie to stop these sewage overflows, but the money wasn't available. What the sewage right to know law did by uh, making that problem more apparent to more people and to more politicians is it got the money flowing from the state and even the federal government to help communities like Poughkeepsie make these investments. Two and a half billion dollars Clean Water Infrastructure Act in 2017. Uh, as we speak today, the legislature and the governor are talking about perhaps doubling that commitment and those grants have really made a lot of this work possible. One of the most important aspects of uh, keeping the river clean and uh, working on our combined uh, sewer issues is the collaboration that we have with other communities, but especially with Riverkeeper. One of the ways that we can collaborate and that we have collaborated is just to bring the needs of Poughkeepsie up to Albany and with all the other communities, 46 communities, amplifying the voice of 
the Poughkeepsie's um, is, is going to help us clean the river, it's going to help give you cleaner water. The Environmental Facilities Corporation, mm -hmm. the EFC, uh, we need to apply for monies that we couldn't, we couldn't fiscally do on our own. Right. And the state recognizes that and, and we appreciate that too. And they've been, you know, they've been great partners, EFC, for the city of Poughkeepsie. We want to make sure that we're, we're good stewards of, of this beautiful river, which is right here behind us. At the Poughkeepsie Launch Ramp, where we're standing, Riverkeeper's water quality sampling shows uh, water quality that would meet federal criteria for safe swimming. There was a time and mm -hmm. is that the river wasn't a place that people really wanted to swim. Yeah. And, and you've seen such an improvement uh, over the past several decades. So here are some facts to bear in mind. The sewage is highly diluted. Add to that the immense volume of water in the Hudson, that's billions of gallons of water, so there's more dilution. We're taking important steps to make the river even cleaner in the future. Since 2008, we have had in place a long-term control plan as part of our DEC permit that allows us a period of time to start doing separation work, and it is a schedule with milestones. We have already spent millions of dollars making things better in our clean water and water pollution control systems, and will continue to do so for years to come. We are incredibly grateful for Governor Cuomo and the funding that he and the state have made available through the Environmental Facilities Corporation, which is helping to advance our long-term plan. But realistically, the cost of improvements to separate all the sewers flowing into the Pine Street CSO and Pine Street Pump Station CSO could easily exceed $50 million. So we're chipping away at it, a piece at a time. We are currently developing design plans to construct approximately $10 million in improvements to the city's wastewater collection system. In 2018, the city applied for and received Environmental Facilities Corporation funding in the form of 0% interest loans and grants in the amount of $11.2 million. $2 million is budgeted for design and construction of improvements to the city's sewer collection system with the goal of eliminating the need for the Riverview CSO location. Approximately $700,000 are budgeted towards improvements at the Pine Street pump station. Approximately $1.4 million is budgeted to investigate potential sources of inflow and infiltration through sewer flow monitor and sewer pipe videos to identify cracks and addressing identified issues using sewer lining. $650,000 for new roofs on the water pollution control plant buildings protect this vital city asset. Uh, just recently, the city received $1 million for porous paving. Uh, what porous paving is, it's paving that allows the water to permeate through the paving, unlike your typical asphalt, which would allow it to sheet flow across the top. So this will grab some of the water, let it percolate into the ground so it doesn't sheet flow to our storm basins. Uh, this is going to reduce the flow to our storm drains. Uh, this amazing project will begin in late spring, and we're real excited. It won't happen overnight, but we're committed to our long-term control plan to improve operations at the city's waste pollution control plant, and over time, we want to limit the discharge of combined sewer into the Hudson River completely. The long-term control plan lasts until 2029, and we'll probably not have completed all the work to modernize our system, but we will be well on the way. So now, when you hear that there has been a discharge, remember the facts. This is a permitted use regulated by a state pollution discharge elimination system permit, which is issued by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. This permit regulates the discharge of wastewater from the water pollution control plant, as well as the discharge of combined sewer overflow. Under the sewage pollution right to know, the permit holder, and that's us, the city, is required to report to the New York Alert System each time a CSO or sanitary overflow occurs within the city's sewer collection system. We never forget the river needs constant vigilance to protect it for now and future generations. Here's to our beloved Hudson River. Here comes the sun Here comes the sun And I say it's alright 